Hey everybody and welcome to Leap Romancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh and today I'm talking about The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. So let's poison the magic of books. Alright, so we're going to start off as we always do, trying to talk a little bit of a non-spoilery method. This was a good book. I had a hard time. I have a hard time saying it's a great book. It's good. It's definitely YA, which I knew when I was getting into it that it was going to be that it was going to be YA, and I wasn't. That wasn't a problem for me. I just, I guess, I was expecting a little bit more from this. This book kind of let me down on a couple levels, but then it, it also did really good on a couple of levels. So, just in a non-spoiler way, let me tell you about what this book is about. This book is about our main character Lilo, which that name just kind of threw me off for the little bit. Uh, just not kind of what I was expecting. Uh, she, uh, on the back of the book, there's a she feeds finds somebody who shouldn't be on her island it is, then he has to make a choice. He goes to the lake or he goes to the forest, both of which will kill him. That's kind of what we're we're told. So you kind of see that it's going to start to be this YA romance, and that's what I was expecting. It just took a little longer for me to really get into it than I prefer. I think it was about 30 to 40% of the book before I was like, yes, I want to keep reading this. Let me just open my book up at every instance and keep reading it. And maybe that's not the typical attitude of most people when they're reading books, but that's usually how I get when I'm reading a good book, is that I just don't want to put it down. So uh, I think we're going to have to just move into spoilers territory because I I don't have much to say otherwise. But let's talk about spoilers and let's just get into our characters. Let's talk about Lilo. Still, the name Lilo just throws me off every time I read it. The other names do not throw me off at all. Sage, Fiona, Ketty, Jaren, The Wandering Forest. Tate threw me off a little bit because it's like those two are like the they're just so they feel anachronistic to me. And there's no there's no like set time period when this is, so there's nothing to say it couldn't be those names, but they just don't fit to me. But Lilo is nice. She doesn't like to hurt things. She has a hard time doing the sacrifices, even of, I mean, of animals, of course, so she has a hard time with it. But she has some strong magic in her singing, and I really thought that was going to play a big part. Turns out it didn't really play a big part, so I was like, oh, that's kind of sad. You know, she's caring, but not weak, you know, not fragile in her convictions. Sage, her cousin, kind of mean, dedicated, very, like, against outsiders, which is, that's the whole culture of the island, but, like, she's especially against outsiders. And, you know, when we learn why that Ketty, or that Lilo's mom, Fiona, had an affair with an outsider that she'd kind of snuck over and then had a kid with and then sent him away. And the way that Ketty, Sage's mom, treats Lilo and Fiona, you can see totally where she's getting this from. So I would say I think that her character work in this book was good. Her trying to decide the her emotions especially of all her characters felt real when Asola, you know, loses Pieter and they have to send him across and he dies, you know, she's grief stricken and I thought that played out really well on the page. The abuse that kind of went on in the, in the family and the way that this is going to go full spoiler, so just be prepared for it that that Ketty had killed her husband because he would did he killed Fiona's husband or you know our main character Lilo's dad because of the affair that's you know she takes that and internalizes it and then pushes that also onto Fiona and onto Sage and onto Lilo and it was very I think I thought it was well done the way she changes she takes it and says this is what happened in the past this is what's happening this is what I'm doing now to it but all on a subconscious kind of level and you can see Sage growing up and kind of following that and not understanding 100% everything so I liked I like her character work I thought it was really good as especially her emotions and a couple of her relationships. But something I did not really like about the character work was Tate. He Tate is her brother. He, he's an Encantu, which means he doesn't have any of the magic, which I just, I'm so disappointed that there was so little magic. So little magic. The magic ends up being, we sing our hunting song, and the prey kind of runs towards us, and we can kill it easier, and we sing our gathering song. You know, they sing the songs, but that's kind of it. Like, there's no, there's, they're surround, they live on a lake with the wandering forest, and the wandering forest has magic and does magic, mainly to call a storm, to call another other storm to try and you know attack people and then you know to kill things and and get the sacrifices but i wish we had seen a little bit more magic or that there had been some other element because the song singing the song magic we don't really see any effects of it in this book because our other main character jared is immune to it because surprise surprise 
He's also Endlin, and that's the people that I only live on. I did not really like that. I thought that was like, ah, really, he's Endlin, and that's why he's immune. It's not just like, hey, there are certain people who are immune, or like, maybe it's not that bad. We can live with other people, so I didn't like that. But let's go back to Tate. This, the whole, the Tate thing was like the first like third of the book where she Lilo is preparing to send Tate off and she's doing a blood magic ritual so that he can maybe stay he can find his magic obviously he can't and he doesn't and so he has to go across the water to live with the you know outsiders and it's just this part just felt so draggy to me and it worked really well with her characters and her relationships like Lilo absolutely loves her brother but for me it was like please let's just like fast forward get to where Tate's gone and then we can get into the main story because Jaren literally gets to the island on the same day that Tate leaves because of the boat which is the only way to travel which again a could have been a perfect use of magic we use this blood magic we do a sacrifice of some kind something sinister and secret to keep the wandering forest and to make this boat able to travel the poison without being damaged no it's just a special sap okay well and what's the poison in the lake is that from the wandering forest no it's something that the islanders do without even knowing it well the younger ones don't know the older ones do know so i just kept feeling disappointed by all these chances to use the magic for something or like to show magic and having it just be oh it's just the lilies we put in the lake that makes it so poisonous it'll eat anything down to the bone and i'm like "Mm, that seems a little far-fetched so i mean the magic's there a little bit but like not at the forefront. And then, oh, we have a boat that can travel across that you send the Inkantu children in. Oh, no, it's just a special sap from the wandering forest. And all, all these things kind of just not my favorite. So we could talk about uh, Jaren a little bit. He's the boy. He's the one that she falls in love with. He's kind of a bookish kid. Loves his family. He's immune to her singing, but he kind of gets the notes stuck in his head. And he has no direction in his life. He remarks a couple times and he like, he wanders around. He keeps getting drawn back to Lake Luma, which is where, you know, Lilo is. And it was interesting. Like, there's just so many things in this book that just make me like, ah, maybe why? Like, what was the point or what is the big wolf creature that chased Jaren and got him into the boat? And then pushed, you know, the, he, the wolf creature did not push him to Lake Lu- through over Lake Luma. But like, wh- why was there this big wolf creature? Couldn't he have just like gotten on the boat and like fell asleep or something, or was hiding from some of the other people in town that he didn't get along with? This this wolf creature just got introduced, and then it just goes nowhere. Like it's not a part of the wandering forest. It's not a part of anything else. So I just that's something that just left me unsatisfied because it just doesn't go anywhere. So let's talk about the atmosphere a little bit. Descriptions of the forest and lake were excellent. The other parts kind of forgettable and less so. Like I didn't, I can't really picture anything in my head except for like the crystal clear lake was mentioned every time. How clear it was and how pristine and you know seeing the atmosphere of things like getting dissolved in it was was good. Like I liked those scenes. I kind of wish. I mean, not, I don't wish there had been more of it because I think there was an ample amount to show what we needed to see, but. I just wish it could have been more. I really wish there had been more scenes of the forest showing its malevolence because there's only a couple scenes that we see and they're all from Jaren's perspective because, of course, Lilo's kind of been, you know, growing up with it. So it's normal for her. But the couple scenes we see where the forest does attack a creature, you know, has a snaking vine that snakes up and eats a bird as it's singing Lilo's song while Jaren's talking to, like, following the bird. And then Jaren's like, oh boy, I better get back. And he like books it back to the little cottage he's kind of staying in. And then the ground opens up and tries to eat the islanders when they're rebelling against it. And it's just, it was good. Those parts were really good. I just wish I'd seen just a little bit more hints of the malevolence because it's talked about a lot, but unless we're kind of in Jaren's scene or like the end where they're turning against the wandering forest, it's not there. It's just another forest, except it's not. So that that was part of that. Um, Something I just I could not figure out how big this island was and that kind of again just pushed me away from the story because it's enough that you can go around it in a day pretty easily like the watchers they have two watchers they kind of circle the island keeping out for threats in the winter time and so it's easy to walk around but it's big enough that there are enough people that you can't you don't know everybody and it has a forest on it so i'm like well maybe it's kind of like a magical forest where it's bigger on the inside but it's not really like that's never really like said or explained or like hinted at even really so i'm like but that's just like so it's this 
big island where you can have like hundreds of people on it all surviving and living but then at the same time you can walk around it easy and there's only one boat because they don't do trade with outsiders obviously it's just for kicking the kids who don't have magic off but there's only ever like two or three kids like a year i just there were so many things that were just like okay so is this island like a mile big is it like this big and there's no measurements of course because that would kind of ruin the story but that was just one thing in the beginning of especially where it's just like uh, what how big is this where is this going like how many people are here on this island because we're only dealing with like four or five how did nobody find this cottage if it's so small small enough that they can circle it on a loop you know doing their rounds but big enough that you know, can all live there see that was the thing is like if they have the watchers who are watching for outsiders to come across they have to be able to make it around the island in a decent time there are only two of them at a time and they go together and so if if it takes you all shift to make one loop that is like a lot that's like 10 hours where somebody could be walking around on the other side from where you were and getting onto the island so it just ah, i liked I, they just i struggled with the island a little bit you guys i'm sorry now i think the writing was good it fit the style of the story there like i said her she really wrote really good emotional beats with her characters and their relationships other parts were just a little bit less so and i really i did really enjoy the second half of this book where lilo is talking and with jared and they're meeting and they're kind of growing closer together and they're doing things together and then they finally kiss and then they kind of do this stuff and they grow and he they talk and they learn about each other's culture and Lilo's like, wait a minute, you know, the outside world doesn't sound as bad as it is all of our stories say it is. Maybe it's really not that bad and the wandering forest is not the good thing here. Obviously this leads to him being caught, which we kind of knew was going to happen. And then he's sent to the forest and this was, I'm like, okay, this is going to be great. He's going to go in the forest and the forest is just not going to eat him. And they'll be like, what the heck? The forest eats, eat, has eaten everybody before him. And that's weird. Like, why didn't that work? And then you know, they change something or they figure something out. But like, they just like, okay, we're going to tie you to a tree and then we're going to release you, give you about an hour head start or less. And then you're going to get hunted. Again, where's the cool magic? They sing the hunting song. doesn't work because he's Endlin, which I just, again, him being Endlin did not work for me. That was not my favorite part. I just, it just was like a, it wasn't like a sour apple at the end of the book, but it was like a slightly unpleasant taste. Not sour, like not as vivid as sour is, but just it was like mm, that was not as good as I as it like it was really good, and then it was like mm, not quite as good at the end there. So so if you like YA and you especially like YA romance, and this one sounds fun, I'd say give it a shot. If you're not really feeling it, then maybe just give up. But this is at the end, so most likely you've already read it. But it is what it is. So so that's gonna wrap up my discussion of the Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. Leave a review that really helps other people to find the podcast. And remember to poison the magic of books. <laughs>